But was that the was that the the normal experience? The thing that you, you and Monster did, um, where, where he would take you with him and all that. Was that normal for homegirls at that time? No, not really. No, no not, not that really. I know of. Hell no. no. Hell no. A lot of them chicks didn't do nothing. I know. I mean, nothing, what you mean? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, and yeah, that that ain't the normal thing that they get their girls and go ride. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, them girls, a lot of them girls didn't do none of that. They ain't had a heart to do none of that. I had a heart of King Kong back then. Now, the day I look back, oh, wow. Oh, I was tripping. <laughs> you know, I was just tripping back then. That that It scares me today to, for the things I did back then. Like, wow, somebody up there was really praying for me. I was in the heart of it, where it all happened, in the dark of it, I'm talking all the graphics, do I ever miss a block, man, they all last, I think it's heaven at the top, till it all crashes, I was functioning with the ref, cause I was one of them, look, every soldier around kept a gun on them, everything looking for them, running up on them, I got some pictures in my mind, I could never post them, it was explosive every day, we made a show of it, tried to get rich and die trying, had to go for it, the generation of the killer made you know of it, but it's hard to be proud when you're grown from it, the clear wrong of it, it seemed right then, a fraternity of brothers stay fighting, for respect and a disrespectful environment, damn the danger in the trenches, what's exciting, life is the kill, at least that's how we move, and your word went nil, had to show and prove, and the strikes we approved was a stepping stool, the network grew, so did the investment grew, I was in the heart of it, where it all happened, in the dark of it, I'm talking all the graphics, do I ever miss a block, man, they all I think it's heaven at the top till it all crazy. This is Gangsta Gangster, and I am your host, Ascari Abdul Montakam. And I'm not here with my co-host today because Deacon Michael Hall is on some grown man business. The church called him and he had to go out and do some deacon. <laughs> so well, uh, he'll come and join us a little later on. Okay. Um, we have a very special guest here with us today. Uh, the incomparable, the myth, the legend, uh, Miss China Doll. Um, so how are you doing, China? Come in, talk to us. So say hello to the people. I'm good. Hello, everybody. I'm great today. Yeah, I'm great. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. This is okay. the first lady of all sides, right? You know, so you know, you know how we always joke. I mean, the listeners will know we always joke that Michael, uh, Michael's baby duck from West Side A Trey Gangster, but you are the first lady of all sides. That's what we call you. Okay, okay. <laughs> 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 the they queen. call me the queen now. The homie she, say you're the queen. <laughs> you are the queen, no I'll doubt about it. Just now, yeah. All okay. Right. So let's begin by uh, uh, talking about uh, how long have you been around a train action? Okay. Actually, I've been around since 1976. Right. I was 12 years old, and I was in Catholic school at the time when I first started. Yeah, that was 76. I was in Catholic school. So and then, what, go ahead. Mm -hmm. no, 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 I was about to say, what happened um, at, at 12? It says, okay, now, what, 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 what was that thing? What, what happened? Like, give us the story. Give us the tell. Okay. Girl. Like, when I was 12, okay, I had a, a little 80th Street, and I had a best friend named Joyce that lived down the street. And um, she lived in an apartment. I lived in the house. So um, next thing you know, Big Huckabuck. He came here from New York City. He had just moved in her. That's her auntie's building. So Big Huckabuck moved in the building with his auntie. So Big Huckabuck met the a trays first. So I'm upstairs with my homegirl, Joyce, and I see these a trays coming up the hill. And I'm like, who are these cats? And I'm looking at them, Monster, Big Fly, Big Track, Big Harv Dog. I'm checking all of them out, come up the hill. Me and my homegirl was like, dang, who are they? What they doing? And we went downstairs, got to meet them and stuff. And and I think they was calling themselves Trey Line then. It wasn't really a Trey Gangster. Right, right. Yeah, Trey Line. Uh, right. uh huh. So we got to meet them and stuff. And next thing you know, shit, we wanted to be part of it. So, so all the dudes you named, but you know, they, they, they was good looking dudes. So. You know, was y'all with y'all? Was y'all jocking the boys? What was going on with no, that? We, well, we was looking too. Oh yeah, oh. we was scoping. <laughs> we was scoping. Yeah, I was scoping on Monster and Joyce. 
the scoping on Big Crazy D, because that was her man back then, Big Crazy D. Mine was Monster. I ended up getting Monster. And uh, that was my boyfriend. That was my first ever boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that was my first boyfriend. And, and, and uh, how old was Monster when you, when, when you and him uh, became boyfriend and girlfriend? Well, he's a couple of years older than me. So, if I was, well, by then, when me and him finally hooked up, I was like in ninth grade. I was in ninth grade, going to the 10th grade in Washington. So I started off at, at Horseman, ninth grade, because before right. that, I was going to Catholic school. I right. was in Catholic school. So when ninth grade hit, I, I went to public. I went to Horseman. That's when I really became full-fledged, you know, a tray and all that. So I went with him about, what, 15 years old, okay. 14, 14. He was about 16, something like that. Right, right, right. And um. We was we hit it off. We just hit it off. Yeah, and and how long were you all together? Mm. You know, he stayed in jail. He yes, stayed he in jail. Yes, he did. Oh, <laughs> he was just like when he was on the street. I, I can't even remember because he would stay in jail. So we just really never broke up. We just went out, you know, just went our little ways, you know, because he stayed in jail. Always stayed in touch with him, even when he got on and got his other women we still was tight you know right you know his wife we i knew them all it didn't even matter because he always still had love for me it didn't even matter so yeah i don't lost the train of thought what i was talking about okay him. well yeah. no, I'll, I'll 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 try to focus you a little bit so let me yeah. ask you this question here okay. um um when you let's let's go i'm, I'm gonna skip to when you were in horseman when you okay. were in horseman um what was gang banging like for the females what were like the lets like like so i tell people all the time that you are probably the most famous cripplet in the world i don't know no none more famous than you but i'm i'm a little biased right so i mm -hmm. there might be i know there's 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 there's, 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 a, less, lot more. Yeah. there's a lot more there's a lot, a lot more that's older than you yeah. you've been around yeah. longer did more did oh, yeah. more but i'm saying that your name you know like if you know, on the LA gangbanging scene, your name was just everybody knew who you were. If they never met you before, whether they met you or not, everybody heard your name back in the day. Yeah. Um, but so maybe you had a different experience than other people. Uh, uh, but but tell me, like generally speaking, I'm not talking about like personally, but generally speaking, what was being a cripplet like back in the in when you were at Horseman? When I was in Horseman, it was. Okay, the thing just jumped off with what with the guy with Tyrone when they killed him because we was just cool with the 60s, you know, the girls right. or whatever. We were straight. So I never really had no altercations with no 60 girls or nothing like that. Really, one of my best friends is a 60 girl today, you right. know. But um in my day, I don't know, it it just stood out with me. We we had our little fights, our little rumbles here and there, but it wasn't really nothing major. Didn't nobody fuck with me. <laughs> Just keep it 100. Right. Didn't nobody, you know, we had a few little different things. Like back then, I was called Noonie. That was my gang name. My best friend was Spoonie. And I had this chick named Carmen. I gave her my name as Lil Noonie. So when she stepped on, she was going to Henry Clay. I was going to Washington. So the the Eleven Deuce girls beat her ass there, jumped on her. I don't know why, jealous of her or whatever, jumped on her. So I called a meeting at St. Andrews Park. Back then, it was like about 30 homegirls. So we mobbed, we walked, we had no cars back then. We walked the Eleven Deuce hood. We get over there, she see one of them. They go one of them that jumped me. I said, bitch, go knock, go suck that bitch out. She did not even want to hit the girl. After I'd have called this meeting, we walked over there like, really? She embarrassed the hell out of me. So we just <laughs> in it. People's mamas coming out the house trying to hit us with canes and crutches and everything. But we tore their ass up on feet coming over there, mobbing on feet. So after that, I, I was just done. I, I, I was done with the, the little homegirl thing. And, and, I, and then years later, that's when Kathy Driver, that's when she became Little China. I really didn't want no home girls. I watched right. her grow up, used to walk her to school, keep girls off her ass. And 
really didn't want no homegirls after that bad experience with that chick, little Noonie at that time. So at that time, I even took little new no big Noonie away from me. I said, I'm just China, you know, my real name. I, I didn't want no parts of that. So I really didn't want no little homegirl. And then I just I just gave in and let her become little Noonie. I mean, little China. And then she met baby China and introduced her to me and see, can she become? That was cool. That was straight. But today, me and little China, you know, it's no more littles. And then baby China resting in peace. Right. Put it like right. that. So, you know, it really, like I say, didn't nobody mess with us. It wasn't really a whole lot of, you know, other than when we get in the cars and go riding, that was a whole different ball game there. <laughs> me and monster that was a whole big different thing with me and him did you know right right Parts the girls you know and then they all just disappeared you know so what, what, what was that the was that the the normal experience the thing that you, you and monster did um uh, where, where he would take you with him and all that was that normal for homegirls at that time no not really no, no not, not that really. i know of hell no. no hell no a lot of them chicks didn't do nothing i know i mean what you mean go ahead mm -hmm. no 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 go ahead i'm sorry you know and yeah that that ain't the normal thing that they get their girls and go ride <laughs> no i don't think so no them girls a lot of them girls didn't do none of that they ain't had a heart to do none of that i had a heart of king Kong back then now today i look back oh wow oh i was tripping <laughs> you know i was just tripping back then that that it scares me today to, for the things I did back then, like, wow, somebody up there was really praying for me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right, right. It makes me nervous today, like, wow. Yeah, that 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 was a trip. Yeah, but it wasn't normal. Me and no, Joyce, I... you know, me and Joyce, Spoony, yeah. And yeah, then by yeah. then, she was going with Big Stony Boy. She was right. going with Stony. So we had our little episodes with Monster, me and Monster, Stony, and Joyce, and oh, yeah. And we did our thing, but other than the other home girls doing it, bitches didn't do shit. <laughs> a lot of them didn't do nothing like that. Not saying that that's cool for them to do that, but nah, they 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 didn't have the heart to do that. No, they, back here, I mean that wasn't really the norm. And I mean, nah, even when I came nah. around, home girls, uh, you know, we talked about this a, a, a part of the podcast. Like home girls, for the most part, like you know, like they, they there was there was a sexual component to, to being a home girl. That was like. You know, dude, that that was like the homies wanted somebody to have sex with. That was um, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was the thing. And uh -huh. and, and I, I talk about it now, like homegirls now, they like they like stupid turned up. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah. um. BC was probably the 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 the, the first homegirl oh, yeah. that just like was like a homeboy. Like. Oh yeah. Like, like that girl yeah. there was. <laughs> She was something else. She was she something else. She in. She did that. I will give her her props with props is due. She yeah. did that. She did that. She yeah. tell me, big home girl, you ain't got to do nothing. That's why you got me here. You kick back. Just, you know, I'll be like, wow. Yeah, she was She was the most. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. so what was your relationship like with baby China? We, 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 we was good. We was tight. Right. We was good. Yeah. I yeah, can't yeah. say we wasn't. At the end, it got a little shaky. I don't know what she was going through. At the end, it was a lot going through her head. I, I'll never know. Right. But I still, I ain't going to talk bad. I'll talk down on her. She gone. But me and her was straight. We, we were straight. She loved my son. She called my son her, got her G baby. And, you know, she loved my daughter. We, we was cool. We, we were straight. Uh, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm wonderful wonderful okay so um now when so like like you you alluded to this tray lines right so tray line was started tray line was before a tray gangster right mm -hmm. were, were you there yeah, yeah were you no no that's absolutely true yeah but, but were, were, were you there when a tray gangster formed or by the time you came along they were always they, they were already calling themselves a tray gangster no it was the tray line back then it was before i I was there before when they call start calling a Trey gangster and all that. Right. See, I right. was there on 80th when, when, when my brother and then my brother is little GC. Now my right. brother, um, we call this a just straight gangster now, you, you know, just drop that little GC shit. But, um, 
he made he actually made the north and the south him and little monster and chico and them in front of our house on 80th they they started it we from the south but you know they was playing in the middle of the street we from the south side we from the north side so they they invented that they made that in front of my house just playing around and then it took off after the years with the b-dub and all the rest you know but yeah they they made that they you know started that right right so mm -hmm. Um, so was it dangerous for Criplets in the 80s? Were, were, were you, were, were, it was dangerous for us, but was it dangerous for y'all? It, it was dangerous just to dodge them bullets. Oh, it was dangerous back then. Because you know how when the a trays got into it with the 60s, when all that, when the war, war hit the, uh, with the 60s, they come over here and hit us. We hit them. It was like ping pong. I call it like ping pong. Back and forth, like tennis. Back and forth. They'd get a good one. we get a good one. They'd get a good one. It was back and forth. And they would kill and they they trade to kill. It, it, was, yeah, yeah. it was wild. It was wild back then. Yeah, in them yeah. days. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, oh, for yeah. sure, it was dangerous in the set. Like, you know, that that's like you're saying. They, 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 would, they would swing through. we go through. That was a, a thing, a back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Um, um and it, but it was it was um there was a larger danger for uh um being a gang member in, in the 80s in los angeles for men um i'm not i'm just asking you i actually know the answer to this question but i'm well i yeah. I'm, 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 i think i know the answer to this question but okay. i'm asking you anyway um so like we we when we when we were going out of the set when we were whenever we were out of the set right mm -hmm. there was you know there was always that danger that we would run into people yeah um and that that would go real bad okay um what was that like for let's like like now okay now i remember one incident because i you know one incident that happened okay we was with big lynn so big lynn said let's go over here i met this guy he's a low rider dude or something like that i think it was a low rider yeah i think he drove drove low riders back then and she said we're gonna go to his shop we catch the bus over there okay we young but we catch the bus over there we on slawson and something avenue when we get over there it's a motorcycle shop and it's just him there in the back of the motorcycle shop it's an alley because it's right off slawson next thing you know okay it's, it's who went there it was mary bart joyce bam and me Next thing you know, Hickam Poochie coming in the alley, coming from one way. I look, because me and him with the horse man together, but me and him never had a problem. He said, Big China, I don't have a problem with you. It's just your homeboys. That's how they come at me. So um, next thing you know, here come another 60 through the other way. I'm like, oh, dude, don't win it. Call these cats. So by then it was it was several 60s in that alley, you know, Jay Stone. It was a lot of known ones. So next thing you know, they whispering, huddling all I hear. That's Big Lin in China. That's Big Lin in China. I'm like, oh my God, I gotta get the hell out of here. Remind you, we caught the bus over there. Okay. Right. <laughs> we caught the bus. So uh next thing you know, the homegirl Bam called one of her friends, come over here and get us. Come get us. So me and Bam, we walked out to the front to Slauson. Every bus went by was out of service, out of service. I was mm. like, oh, man. So anyway, she called her friend. He came and got us. We jumped in that car and left. Now, Big Lynn, my best friend, Joyce, Mary, they stayed. They went and got something to drink. I'm not finna sit and drink with no 60s at, at a known, you know, we was warring. I'm not finna get comfortable over here with these cats. So me and Bam left. We got on, but didn't nothing happen to him. Thank God nothing happened. Cause if it would have been some chicks, known chicks like that in our turf, they wouldn't have made it out alive back then. I know they wouldn't have. That just wouldn't have. I don't know if they'd have been dead or you would have got your ass whooped, drugged. Something would have happened. You just wouldn't yeah. have left just straight out like you know you like you came. So <laughs> that shit was crazy. They never did that again. And Big Larry, why, well, bitch, you can take about 10, 20 niggas whipping your big ass. I'm gone. You crazy. So <laughs> that, that was one little thing that happened out of the set. We had no business over there anyway. But I'm thinking it's a low. I should have asked where we was going, actually. 
If she would have said Slauson and something now, I'd have knew better. I'm not going over there. So that was only one little thing ever happened. I don't think I ran in, like when I went to Washington, the UGs, the neighborhoods, all of them cats liked me. Them cats again me. I mean, I don't went to they parks. Did they see me? Game just gave me a pass. That was crazy back then. They just never bothered me. They yeah. loved me in Washington. The blocks, UGs, all of them. Neighborhoods. They knew where I was from. Because back then I wore game banging clothes every day. Out of the Western Surplus, I had everything Western Surplus had up in there. <laughs> security so, guard like me at western surplus okay? okay so 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 i'm curious now you know I, I know how i know how we dressed when we would g'd up um back then how do you do the same thing was y'all in pendletons and, I, and khakis what, I mean, what was y'all wearing the pendletons the khakis uh i wore it all but i called myself because my hair be fly have my makeup i wore it sexy i i called it that being sexy but i don't know if today is that being sexy wearing a khaki suit but i have a dance <laughs> in body suit underneath and, and have my lid on have my makeup it was a different way why how i wore it today the homegirls put that shit together and look like mechanics we didn't i didn't look like a mechanic i look i look sexy in my shit like the essay chick SA chicks be fly with they little gang banging shit here be fly. The homegirls, they I be like, boy, you know, I don't I don't need to teach you how to wear no khakis and all that. But one thing I don't like about that, they wear they wear the gang banging stuff to people's funerals. Now ain't no homegirl wear the gang banging shit like I did. But when it's a funeral, I have respect for people's family. You don't come with no khaki suits and blue rags hanging when you got mothers and grandfathers and all this and aunties they be looking crazy as hell to me that that i don't i don't, I don't get out like that i don't like that now okay, after I'm, the funeral then you know go and do your thing but have some respect you know that, we that, that, that was that was a thing that. that was a huh? thing right so like 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 the homies if that's what they did they would they would they would get g'd up and go to funerals all the time like you you saying you didn't like it when the, the, I, sick, I didn't when, like when the, the home girl did it the home huh? girl I can't oh. really say the guys. That's their thing. I'm speaking for as the females. I right. guess for me, I, you know, come on now. I, I I don't know. That's just me, my taste. That's right. just, I can only speak for me, you know, because I feel like this. You don't wear that shit no other time. I wore it every day, except for, for if it was a funeral. Y'all put right. that on on a funeral. People know where I'm from. I step wherever I go and have my shit on, my gear. But y'all wear that at a funeral and then go home and then dress like a girl, girl, you would never know. Oh, no, I, I had a problem with that. <laughs> I just did. Y'all faking and shaking with that shit. I yeah. wore it every day. People knew where I was from. Shit, they knew what was happening. So right. that's not my take on that one. All so right. so I, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you this. Um, um, so HRA gangsters have, have a, um, a legacy, a, a reputation um that of being like you know the top level gangsters right you know back mm -hmm. certainly back in the 80s 90s yeah, that the was 80s. that was absolutely the the where you know the the um you know the status right they was notorious um, back then notorious. one of the notorious ass gangs yeah 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 and um the reason that was or this is my take on the reason it was is because we were true believers right we actually believed in this this thing um did you did you was that your experience personally i want to ask you personally was that your experience and i want to ask you about um the homegirls did you what was their buy-in what was their their take on being uh treylettes i couldn't tell you what they i don't know far as the way i kind of got lost on the question it's kind of like two questions you said right right okay so, okay yeah, the first question first question is, is or like, were you a true believer? Like, what did you really like believe in this thing? Like, you know, like truly believe in it when, oh, yeah. when you were young? Oh yeah, I did. I yeah. did. Cause we was like a, like people always say, oh, we was a family. We really were. We was really close. My certain crew that came in my backyard every day in my playroom in the back, like, like I say, monster diamond, eight ball, tray ball, all of them that was in my backyard, we was tight. Right. We never had no shit among each other. 
we stayed, we was tight. It's nothing like today. We, of course, we don't even mention the day because it's all, it's over with today to me. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. back then we was, we, we was tight. Right? I was a true believer in that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now today. Yeah. Totally big, different thing. Were, were, you, were, were you willing, were you willing, I'm, I'm again, I, I'm asking questions I know the okay. answer to, but were you willing to, were you willing to die for H.R. Gangster yeah. back then? Back then, back then I would have. I remember my grandmother say China. What did she, how did she say that to me? She, I forgot how she said it, but I never forget. I told her, I called her mommy because my grandmother raised me. I said, mommy, if I die, I just die. And I remember that like yesterday. Today, oh hell no! <laughs> I, 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 you you have no conscience. I had no conscience at that age. Didn't know no damn better. So I was that much a believer in this a trade thing. I was with that all of that. Yeah, I told my granny, if I die, I just die. No. I, I that should make me shake today to even say something like that. But so I do you do you that. think do you think that that um do you think that that having that attitude at that age was a function of you being young or a function of that being a true believer that I do or die attitude? Little, I can say a little bit of both. I, I was both. with that, but then I was young to even right. make a statement like that. I was young, but I believe right. that shit. I I I was with that. Like, you know, I was with all that. We out here banging. If I get killed doing what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I was a true believer in that. Right, <laughs> right, right. It's scary to say, but yeah, back then, <laughs> back then, I had a lot of people say, is she still living? They're like, wow, just to say that, am I still living? Yes, unfortunately, I'm still living. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, you know, one of the things I, I, I say that, um, if, if we choose this lifestyle, right, um, um, in our youth, right, the chances of us, you know, achieving, you know, market success um, are, are, are not good, right? You know, because that's the, that's the way this, this thing rolls. Like, yeah. you know, you end up in the penitentiary for a long time or dead mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. shot up or addicted to drugs, alcohol, you know, whatever it is, because this lifestyle is, is, um, it's, it's insidious, right? It, 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 yes. it actually, it's actually insidious. And, you know, nobody in their right mind would want this for their children, right? You know, because yeah. it's just, you know, we, we did it, we lived it, we, we, we suffered the consequences of it. Um, we know better now. Yes. Uh, but um, this, 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 this lifestyle, it, it literally, you know, takes things from you. So um, what did it take from you? What 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 did being a H Ray gangster take from you that you can never get back? Took a lot of my good friends. Mm. I can, can never bring them back. It took a lot of my good friends. Right. Yeah, a lot of my good homeboys. Right. It really did. And they were kids then, 15. They didn't even live. They didn't have a chance. That it took. That that took that took from me. Yeah. That was sad. That was a sad situation. Right. How all those killings went on both sides, on both sides, 60s yeah. and a trace. That was so, it's so senseless. It's sad. You know that I'm older now and you realize that. Yeah. 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 That, wasn't cool. that wasn't cool. Blacks killing blacks. I don't condone in that at all today. I hate that this is still going on today and it's going to be going on after I leave here, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we, we talked about this before, you know, how there used to be funerals going down the street every day. Yeah. I mean, you remember, you should see those those funeral processions. Every single yeah. day, there was yeah. a funeral procession because somebody in L.A. was getting gunned down by somebody else, you know, yeah. from the other set. Every mm -hmm. single day, there was a funeral. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, and and, and you, were, you were around at that time when you would have, like, yeah. You, and, and, and because you were a let, um, you would have, you know, you had a different relationship with, with, with homeboys than than, than homies even have with each other, right? Um, you know, you you were a homegirl, you know, like, and you were just, and you were, again, you know, you were like a top-notch homegirl. So mm -hmm. you 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 would have had a different relationship and you that would have hit you very differently, um, I, I imagine, than, than um, seeing all those deaths and you would have been there for them because quite frankly, they don't send girls to jail like they do dudes. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, so you would have you been out there for them. You'd have been out oh, there yeah. to see those funerals over yeah. and over and over again. Yes. So 
what kind of emotional toll did, does that take on you? Like, you know, all that death. Well, today is like, I, I'm, I'm just so tired of it. Today is, is just too much. Because there have been several funerals that came during COVID and all that, that I just didn't even go. KV, uh, it was somebody else. It, it was just too much. And right. after Monster, when Monsters hit, I was just through. That I was just through. It, it's just too much. It's too many funerals. BK, I didn't go to his. I didn't. I didn't miss a few of them in there because I just enough is enough. I'm just tired. I'm so yeah, tired but, of funerals. Yeah. 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 I. I. I, I can dig that. I, yeah. I. Um. Yeah. I'm tired. I've been yeah. through enough that I don't need to go to anymore. It's just too much. Yeah. Yeah. Look, that little KV that that hit me hard too. You know. It, yeah. That, that, that was really my hit dude. me hard. Yeah. When I passed by his house the other day, time I just look, want to see him sitting on that porch. In Big Mama's wheelchair, you know, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it hurts, it, it, all that hurts, yeah. It took yeah. a toll, yeah. Enough is enough, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what kind of work do you do now? But in in terms of the 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 you know you you were working with a uh, um uh with the use in the park and all yeah, that, right? Yeah, we try to hold that park down. Try to get these little young cats to. They would come up there and put people on and all that. And we would have to tell them to stop that. You know, it's kids over here looking and, you know, so we, we, we had to make them stop. We, we had to stop that. So we got to the point that we got them out of there. They stopped coming up there doing that. You know, okay. enough is enough. We're trying to keep the park safe because that's one thing, you know, we, we didn't do a lot of that. Like we didn't come to the park. Well, we did have some. They did have some little, no, they would come up there like for the meeting, back then the meetings, but they didn't do like these guys did today, totally disrespectful. These other cats, they done. Hey, how you doing? Hey, good, good. Good seeing you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we had to get that straight with them little cats up there because we didn't disrespect the people who worked there, like Joni and them been there for years. We always had respect for Joni and them in the park. And these little young cats have no respect. They come disrespecting her, disrespecting the, the little kids, picking up their moms, picking up their kids. And ah, uh, it was too much. But now they're not up there no more like that. Yeah, we yeah. had to get that straight. You know, that, that, that's that's one thing that is kind of striking because we, as as demented as our, our mentality was, mm. we, we had a code or, or, or we thought we did, but we did. We had a code. There was, there were, there were just rules to this thing, right? Yeah. There were um and and respecting you know folks and people's mamas and and, and even you know their families it, that that was a um was a a, a norm right yes. and i know i know it, it it changed over time and 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 uh you know that 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 certainly that thing with uh with with, with joker um oh, yeah. and his family would have mm -hmm. caused that whole dynamic to change um la wide but i mean we, we we always had a code it was a it was a thing about respecting you know oh yeah you, had to, guys, you had to respect family. the turf yeah. you had to respect the people yeah. who lived there you couldn't just do anything you wanted to anybody exactly. because exactly. that was people's you had to you, you, you were required to respect the people around uh -huh. um and you're out there now so you, you say that you when you when you see the the young folks now they're they're not that way they don't have that yeah kind of, yeah, we oh, didn't wow. ride them out the park with that because they'll just go up and run up. And remember, they was jumping on this man. And I said, stop that. Why are y'all doing that? And the little one of the little guess a little A trade girl was like, no, let me tell you, Big China, what, what he said. Uh, we asked him where he's from. And he said he's from everywhere. The man was mental hell. I said, see, y'all going to need to pick and choose your battle. Somebody going to hurt y'all because this man don't even have good sense. What are y'all doing? This is our part. Stop that, you know. So they be right. silly. They is just too silly and disrespectful today to me, you yeah. know. But but ever since all that, you know, they they don't they don't even come up there really no more. Well, I haven't been up there, but they don't they don't come up there like that no more. Yeah, they was doing way too much, way too much. So maybe oh. they don't find them somewhere else to go now. <laughs> all right, so Michael, we'll jump in with some questions, man. I know you got some questions. Well, so. I don't. I don't even know where y'all at. Sorry. I know we just we, we just we just chit chatting. Y'all just, just talking. 
Yeah, just just right. Because I, I basically I had one to uh, chime in on which I was talking about. You know, when uh, you when China was talking about uh, the youngsters not respecting the elders and things like that, because it's, it, it start with they don't respect for one their parents probably, but yeah. for two they don't respect like their older homies. You know, yeah. one thing about us, we respected the old, older homies. Anything the older, older homies told us, I mean, we, we were following it. So yeah. if they told us, don't fuck with this person over here, we not finna fuck with that person. We didn't even yeah. need to know why we should yeah. fuck with them. If the older homies say don't do it, we ain't doing it, you know? Yeah. Right. And so, the cool part about it, they don't even know who they big homies is. These little exactly. cats don't even know. Right. A lot of people say, look, when you see her, this you don't mess with her this is such and such and they have to tell these little cats at the park who we right. are and you know i guess they looking at us like i guess we just some old uh, old lady over there <laughs> old man, whatever they looking up at us they don't even right. know they don't even know right so they so they don't know what they're doing they're lost and they need exactly. somebody to fight them you know right. i could just tell them boy y'all need to go to school and run go the other way you're going, there, you're going it wrong. Don't go to the game, man. Go to school, learn something, you know. Right. They don't even go to school. They don't go to school. I don't understand it. It's yeah. so bad. And they're little. They're little. And they, they don't go to school. Right. Yeah, because yeah. I had to go to one so of them's house one day. And because they took off on one of the little uh, guys' um, little most paid bicycle. It was gone to nighttime on it. No respect. So I said, right. I the little guy live, went over there. The mother got about 12 kids. All wow. the babies coming out. She thought I was coming to tell her her son was dead. She was nothing, nothing happened to Frankie, did they? I said, no, just need yeah. the money from him. And then here he come riding around the corner. I had to tell him, look, Frankie, when somebody lets you ride, you can't just keep going like that. He's right. about two years old, maybe. He just take off and don't stop. Gone in the wind. But he don't go to school. None of the brothers. It's a family. It's three of them. The, the sister from the set and the two brothers. None of them go to school. It's just sad. I try to talk to them, but hey. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, one of the questions I would like to ask you is, like, when you first start coming around, uh, like, what was your experience? You know, what, what, what drove you to the set? You know, See, what, you know, yeah, you come in on the, yeah, well, like I told. Oh, you, he had, a, you already talked about it? Yeah. So, well, I want to hear it again. Okay. No, she gonna, she right. gonna, she gonna tell you the, her version. <laughs> she gonna, she right, 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 right. <laughs> okay. When I first was knowledge with the A-Trays, okay, um, my best friend, Joyce, you remember Joyce, right? Yeah, I remember yeah, Joyce. Uh -huh. Now she lived on 80th like me, but she lived down the street in the apartment. And right. Big Huckabuck had came from New York City. He had just right. moved down here. This was like 1970 something, the end of the 70s, right. late 70s. And um, um, he had just came in town and he moved in her building downstairs. Next thing I know, I see Big Monster coming up the hill, Big Track, right. uh, Doverman Pincher, um, Eight Ball, Trey Ball. I'm seeing right. all of them come up the hill. And I'm like, who are these cats? Like, oh shit, we looking at them, me and Joyce. Next thing I know, they had a little gang, the tray line or whatever. Right. Said, well, we want to be part of that. Right. So after that, kind of was history. It really right. wasn't no homegirls for me and Joyce. Now, it was the first generation as the West right. Side of girls. Uh, you know, I don't take nothing from them, you know, and they date right. with Big Frog and them. And then I feel I'm the second generation, me and Joyce. Right. You know, because when me and Joyce stepped on, it was no homegirls. Okay. It was no. So after right. that, people started recruiting, and we had about 30 homegirls back then. Right. So that's how it all started. And the rest right. of the history, yeah, so it, that's how I so started. It wasn't, for you, it wasn't never a put on. Oh, no. It wasn't never a put on. Right. It wasn't never. No, it wasn't nobody that would put me. Who gonna to put, put you on? Right. Like you were, you were, <laughs> so you were, on, God so, when, so so when you a hey, so when you write so when you write no G that that is really mean that uh, original huh? Uh, yeah, I get for real, for real. Right. But our thing was, you know, like they have it today. You got a bunch of people jumping on you. Our thing was, we go blasting. That's how right, we right, get right. on all that with a bunch of people <laughs> beat your ass. To me, that ain't never meant nothing to me. <laughs> it ain't right. never meant shit to me. I don't know who made up that, but it never meant nothing to me. 
with me and me, we go get down and do something, we gonna see who stay down. That that right. means something to me. All that with ten bitches beating my ass. No, nah, we ain't doing none of that. No, nah, so yeah, that, <laughs> never, that never happened with me. Okay. Yeah, I, I get I put on was different. So yeah. did you did you ever did you ever put anybody on with the with the beat down? No, no. Okay. We ain't even, they they did their own thing. They put each other on. They did that. I had to touch nobody. No. Nah. Right, that's right. Nah, me and Joyce either. We we didn't no. Nah. Right. Yeah, we, we didn't even go through that part. Yeah. So yeah. for you though, was it just about being a part of the group or was it about you were going through some shit and you felt that uh the this particular group uh could relate to you or you know what I'm saying? Or you could find acceptance with them. What was it? You no, know, nope. what was it? Because just, you was joining just, the game. Just being part of just being part just being of being part of the group. Yeah, right. I, I had a good life. I lived a good life. Right. You know, I lived both worlds. I lived a good life. Right. You know, I, I would be in the set and then, you know, like we was in the backyard and then the, you know, the homies and then in the front, my uncle, you know, my uncle's David Deacon Jones that played for the Rams. So we got the ball players in the front, got the gangsters in the back, and we having right. a good time, you yeah. know. Then I take off in the Rolls Royce, go to Malibu, my uncle's house, my auntie's house, and have a good time. We right. travel. I done traveled all over. Grandparents, all that. So I live both worlds. Come back right. from the sand, have a good time. So it was just some fun for me to do. Yeah, right, right. just had okay. a good time. One now peer pressure, and it was just there, it was just set in my lap, basically. Right. <laughs> it was just set, you know. Yeah, I wasn't going through nothing. I just, you know, right. had a good time now. So what? What was the scariest moment you had as a as a as a as a let? Hmm. I never even thought of that. Yeah. I don't really even remember nothing scary that, that's just like devastating. Like I can't remember nothing like that I can speak on. Because right. like I say, I, 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 my, I, my, I had a heart of King Kong then. Didn't have no <laughs> word I'm trying to say. Didn't even, wasn't scared back then. Right, right. You just. Say it's a different story. <laughs> Right. You're so exactly. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, right. oh God! Back then, it was no thing. Right, yeah. right. I can't really yeah. recall of anything that, like, oh, I was scared as shit. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was just different back then for me in my game banging days. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. It didn't bother so, me. Much bother me. So, uh, what would you say though? Uh, like, as far as, like, what? Like, have have you have had the set cost you anything? Like no. me and me and uh J Moss, we talked about how all the things we've been through and like you know, the trauma, a lot of trauma. We done been through a lot of trauma, just seeing yeah. homies get killed and yeah. going to prison and all of that stuff. Like how how have it affected you? No, it I really like you were saying about everybody getting killed, all the, I done lost a lot of good ones. You know right. that bothered me, but I have I have nothing that just really affected me that really bothered me, other than right. you know all the killing. You know right. that's enough is enough. Blacks killing blacks. I'm done with that. I'm tired of right. that. But no, I have nothing that just really you know affect me and just stuck with me like that. No, that I can think of. You know what 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 about other homegirls? You do you think that um do you think that they have psychological trauma as a result of being treylets or or even just just cripplets or even the, the bloodlets just being gang gang members female gang members in los angeles then and now do you think that um there is a a, a psychological toll that that takes on on the female psyche particularly you know we were talking about earlier that that in some place in some instances homegirls were just sex toys right they yeah. were they were they were used as to 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 for sexual pleasure, and that was their role. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of role? Psychological. And you didn't. You didn't have that experience. That wasn't. I didn't have that experience like but, that. But, but what was the kind of psychological, you know, trauma? Do you think that the homegirls experienced as a result of like having to play those kind of roles? Mm. Um. I think like a lot of them got on drugs and stuff. Is that kind of like you know yeah. turn to drugs and just right. lost today? 
like Dana Yoki, the homegirl. She right. just, you know, you know, and then lost her life. I don't know how she had some, something killed her, but she got on drugs too tough. She got on drugs. I'm sure that was a lot of trauma with her. Yeah. I'm sure baby China went through trauma, getting shot nine times. You yeah. know, I can't speak on, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of trauma out there with home girls, but I just don't know personally. You know, I, I never went through it personally. Right. As far as trauma right. and, you know, something that really affected me in the set. Yeah. Yeah, I never really went through that. And and the difference between um, the home girls in your generation, um, and I'm not talking about you, because I'm talking about yeah. the home girls in your generation and okay. the home girls now. Uh, what do you see as that difference? Totally different. Totally different for them, for them to us today. For one, they sleep with each other's men. They share them like, like it's nothing to do. I don't condone in that. Like, what the hell is wrong with y'all? They just have lower standards to me than than me and my girls in my day. They 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 just loose and just it's just too much. I don't I don't understand that, you know, and I never will. You know, that part I don't I don't I don't understand them. Totally different, two different generations. Right. Oh, wow, it's just too much. Yeah. I just right. look at them like, you know, I can't tell them nothing. You know. So so how do you like interact in with today's generation? Like, or do you interact with them? I have a few of them that I'll talk to, you know. I it's a few of them, like G1 and 2. I speak to them. They cool, you know. I, you know. Right. But I'm not really close with any of them. Not really. Right. Yeah, not really. It's not like I call them, hey, it is that. It, it's maybe China was the only one that you could say in the different generation that, you know, of course, me and her was tight. We were straight. Right. And Kathy at one time, me and her, but the the rest, you know, I just, you know, hey, they give me my respect and keep it going. Some might ask me certain stuff. I let them know, and you right. know, and that's about it. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that that that's kind of like the problem that's that's happening. You know, I'm I'm certainly happening in, in the set, but it, it happens all over in everybody's set. Is that there's no appreciation for history, right? Yes. Like you were saying that. The, the very fact that somebody has to tell some kid at the park who you are and they shouldn't mess with you is, yeah. is an absurdity, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it, that there, there should be some understanding of the people that, that paved the way for the, the, the thing that you're doing, um, as perverse as it is. I mean, you know, yes. you know, but I'm saying, but there, there, there needs to be some understanding, like, you know, um, you need some of these young kids, they'll, they'll walk in the park and they see older homies and, they just walk right by them. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, don't know, if, I don't know if it's fear or or, or they just shy or, or I don't know what the yeah. word is, but they they have I mean, no respect. Yeah, I, I I know when I was coming up, like I wanted to meet all my homeboys and mm -hmm. homegirls, especially if they was you know really from the set because yeah. I felt that I wasn't from the set if I didn't know them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, this, yeah. so for me, I'm I'm trying to meet these people. I want to get to know them. You know? Yes. Yes. Right. Well, they know who we are now. They in the park. <laughs> they know now. They let them know who is who. And the right, little right. boys actually come up and hug me now, the little boys. And I look like they hugging my waist. I'm like, okay. You know, <laughs> right. they let them know who we are now. Right. And the girl. They let but, them know. That's how they that, that, that That's what needs they, to they happen. They didn't know we know better. They just didn't right. know. You know? Yeah. Who did they think was, you know, I don't know. Right. They just stepped on. It ain't nobody above them. I don't know what they were thinking or thought, but yeah, they know us now in the park. We just not the old people over there at the table now. <laughs> that's how I looking at us like the old people, you know. Yeah. You know, that's how I say we like the old people now. The police come in the park, they see us <laughs> older than the police today. The police just look at us and keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I say, wow, we old yeah. now. But at least I'm still here, you know. Right. Because right. wow, a lot of us is gone. They made it. Yeah. This, I wouldn't have never looked this far in life, you know. Right. No, not at all. Not at right. all. 
didn't think I'd be this age. Didn't even think about that. Right. Uh, so I know, I know you didn't experience a lot because you, unlike you know, us, we you know we did a lot of t uh, prison time. Mm -hmm. You've been out there, so you didn't seen it all. You didn't been through the the, the late seventies through the all of the eighties, the nineties, the two thousands. So yeah. like, what would you say? was the like uh i don't know how to put it but like the best uh time for you as far as being china for matrix against them um in the 80s the 80s, the 80s. The for me right. the 80s. in right. my backyard in the right. playroom right. uh across the street um down the street some on 80 it was the blue apartments we still call it the blue right. apartments today even though it's brown <laughs> It's going to always right. be the apartments. You know, we are hanging there. Right. It was the 80s. The 80s. And then they had this chick lived in there named Peaches and Joy. <laughs> yeah, we used to have a ball on 80. Because Peaches and George, you know, they had their apartment there. And they would let us party every Friday night, the A-Trays. we party. be Lil Spike. Lil Spike was my cha-cha partner. Lil Spike and Big Hard Dog. When something come on, we're Lil Spike and we're Lil Hard Dog. Them was my boys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, but the 80s was fun. Other than all the killings, you know, other than that, we 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 had fun. Go right. to Magic Mile, you go to Magic Mile, have fun. We go to Greyhound Bus, deep, go to Magic Mile. We had we had we had a lot of fun. We had so, a lot of fun. So how how did um how did it affect you? The homies that, that went to the joint, how did that affect you? Did, or like you know, because you know many monster was one of your boyfriends but you had other boyfriends from the set so how did and they they went to the joint so how did that affect you what what effect did that have on your life only one affected me that went to jail was my brother now that that affected me not my, my not my man really really well 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 they you had children so they they would they the fathers they that would well, that, that had to have well, some big effect. fish well big fish when right. he went yeah that's my daughter's father yeah, that 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 hurt me. That hurt me that he 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 left like that. But um, yeah, I didn't like that at all. But we had fam family visits and stayed and you know like that. Right. And um, but uh, my brothers is really what hurt. Sorry me about that. that. Um, yeah, sure. my brothers is really that hurt me the most. You know, when right. uh he got incarcerated. Because every time I go up there to see my brother, that it was just heartbreaking. For some reason, with my brother, it was heartbreaking. I could see my man, whatever, even though it did hurt with Fish First Left. But my brother's incarceration, I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. Mm. You know, he um he had came home on a furlough because my grandmother sent him away to job court because he kept messing up in school. So she sent him away. So he came home for Christmas time. So um it was New Year's Eve night, and um, I had all these guns, and we finished shoot for New Year's Eve. And our monster left and went up to Western Surplus to get some bullets. So when he went up there, every damn gang was up there, you know, in the 60s, shot him up up there. So little monster came back and said, you know, he shot up this, that, and the other. So next thing you know, the next night, little monster come to my door and asked, is little GC here? And I looked over there at my brother. My brother did. My brother went. <laughs> and I went, yeah, he here. I should, <laughs> yo, yo, I wish I respected that. But I felt today, if it wasn't that, it would have been something else with my brother. It probably, jail saved his life, probably. I'm sure jail saved his life. Save so mine. my brother, yeah. So my brother got up, went out that door and got in that van with about eight goddamn cats and went and did that. Stupid going doing something like that with all these guys so he went on back to job corps next thing you know big joker called me he said china gc did something i don't know something they did that's all joker was saying so when my brother called home i said ronnie what, what the hell going on what what what's going on he went oh nothing china don't worry about it ain't ain't, ain't nothing he said but i'm coming home because he kept getting caught in the dormitory with the girls so they finally kicked him out. And I was happy my brother coming home. Yeah, he coming home. I'm, I'm happy I missed my brother. And I'll never forget it was January. It's real cold and raining that morning. So Lil Monster was trying to call because the police hit his house first. He was trying to call me to tell me 
tell GC, you know, whatever. Just telling me no, because GC wasn't on. He was telling me the police is finna come. But the lines was down because it was raining so hard. Next thing you know, it come to pig. 187 for Ronald Young. Woo, woo, woo. They took my photo album, books, all my shit. My grandmother said, well, he's not here. He's in Job Corps. They called up the Job Corps. They let him know he's coming home on the Greyhound today. My brother never made it home. That was January wow. 1981. He didn't make it home to January 13, January 2013. Wow. 32 and a half years wow. behind that. But that really hurt me my brother's time. I was like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 that, that hurt. It. But yeah, but you out there in the streets, and yeah, he did some dumb shit with all them. Yeah, it was too yeah. much. Yeah. And one of them still in there today. He's the last one. One of them is still in there. But yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah that, so, that um, so you 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 had mentioned that that when fish went 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 to went to the joint that that hurt. Like what how many homegirls have you seen have to go through that particular thing? That they have they have babies by a homeboy, and inevitably this lifestyle, we're going to joint, we're going we're, we're going to the penitentiary. So how many people you miss homegirls if you had to see have to raise their children on their own because they, their men had to go to prison? Only one I know is is baby China, baby China's, but her dude, whichever one at that time, they didn't do a lot of time. It wasn't a lot of time like that. She's the only one I know. And in, in my ear, I was the only <laughs> dumb, dumb girl. I have all had these cats that go to prison. They didn't <laughs> deal with that, you know? Yeah. Maybe I'd have a husband today if I wasn't dealing with these men. In the <laughs> okay? So let's not go there. Okay? I've been a lot of stand down, all that bullshit. For what? <laughs> oh, that was, well, we'll talk, but talk about that. Talk talk about yeah. that. Talk, talk about oh, right, you know right, right. right. That's yeah. like interesting. Like homegirls, yeah, homegirls got a homegirls. They 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 get it. You know, they tell the tell the viewers what staying down is. Like when when you staying down for your cat, your your dude that's in the joint and all that. What what does that mean? Yeah, when you run into when you you and you know you're sending them packages and you're going on visits and let alone when you 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 sending dope through the motherfucker, all that bullshit. <laughs> You know, <laughs> putting the dope in the chucks and the heroin, I did all that shit. You know, uh-uh, I was doing way too much, okay? <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, that that was that was crazy to me. Now, look, yeah. that, that wasn't cool. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, that was a lot of wasted time. I mean, but uh, there, there, there were a lot of homegirls who got babies by homeboys who and that's their that's 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 the that's the lifestyle that's yeah. what happens and, and and because because the, the the culture doesn't really respect women right uh that's not a part of you know gang culture you know yeah. now it, it, having like you know high level of respect for the women it, it's very easy to say me yeah, yeah um yeah uh you know you pack you pack pack that up and uh slide that up in the country <laughs> Because uh, in, knowing that if they get caught, they're going to the penitentiary, and that the yeah. children are not going to have the mother there, like that's not even a consideration, really. Like, like yeah, yeah. You know. Which I did go to jail. I went to jail behind that. Wow. Uh, yeah, that wasn't cool at all. Yeah. You know, I, I'm glad by the time I did get caught, it wasn't nothing but weed by then. Yeah. That wasn't cool. That wasn't cool. Yeah. You know, because. Uh, so uh, so about that experience when you had to go to jail, like so you were in the visiting room and you, you was passing something to somebody and you no. got caught. What happened was yeah, yeah, that was 99 that happened. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 99. And then once I went, I went to Marysville State Prison, but I only was there by me being a by me being a dope uh uh okay, now how how would I say it? Um a first time offender as an adult. I was eligible with no more than five years because I got sentenced to five years. Right. But I need being eligible to go to boot camp in, in, in Ohio, Marysville State Prison, not right. long, five years down to like maybe a year and some change. Then I went to the Alvis house that's in Columbus, Ohio. So I did 60 days there and flew back home. And then they mm. had LA 
I, I was on parole only one year in Inglewood, right here in La Brea. They, they I, that was my parole officer for one right. year. And then that was it after, after 99, after it, uh, 96, beep, beep. that one, and 99. Yeah. Those only two troubles I got into as an adult. Okay. As an adult, yeah. That, that, that was the only two, and they was out of state. Now, the first one I went as, as, a, um, as a juvenile, <laughs> that one day, this was 1981, uh, eight, no, 80, 80. Because Monster and my brother went and uh, stole a 1980 Lincoln Continental two-tone from gunpoint from a guy in Inglewood. So you know mm. when you steal a car at gunpoint, they 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 coming. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, he's coming. They looking for that car. Right. So we go into a party that night. So my grandmother, my brother can ask my grandmother, can China go to her party? You know, I'm young. Yeah, she can go. We already, we finna go blasting before we go to the party. <laughs> so me and Master, we got these guns in the front seat, the back seat. So we get in the Lincoln. Joyce and Stone in the back. Me and Monster in the front. So, so, so um Monster said, we're going to the hundreds. I said, fuck them hundreds. Let's go to the 60s. Them motherfuckers are the one that give us problems. So when he turned around on Manchester and Harvard, it was about 20 NARC cars behind us. So he was hitting, and, and Harvard got nothing but dips. Dips. He went from <laughs> Manchester to 79. He hitting them dips. Boom, boom, boom. When he got to 79th in Harvard, he tried to make a right, lost control of the wheel, ran into the tree. Bam. He say, run. It's a two door leaking. I don't know why I'm going out on his side, but if I would, if he wouldn't have slammed that door, I bet you I probably would have passed him up. <laughs> and Joyce and Stone was in the back. They was just captured anyway. But when I come out on his side, his reflex closed the door. Like, hey, he got away. They laid us down in the middle of 79 helicopters. The whole party, Trey Ball, all of them come over there. They all looking at us, my brother, everybody. Face down on the ground. The dogs are looking for monster. Never caught him. Never found him. And I never did. And my grandmother mm. came to Lost Madrina. She said, look, China, uh, Charles, which that's Stone, Charles' daddy, Mr. Ely, said he was going to kick his ass if he didn't tell who was <laughs> <laughs> I looked at my grandmother and I said, what? I never said nothing. So when I went to court, they split us up, me, Joyce, and Stone. So when I went to court, I'd never forget that little white lady had her little red suit and her gold cane. She was real old. They said something to me in court. That little old white lady went. I was eligible to plead the Fifth Amendment and got my <laughs> juvenile hall baby a week and got yeah. my ass back home. Right. Yeah. If we would have did something, Charles would have told. Stone would have. <laughs> we done did shit with Stone. I was like, oh, you got to be more careful than that. You got to be. <laughs> Bro's daddy was going to tell his ass. He didn't have to beat his ass. He was going to tell him, I'm going to beat his ass. Who was driving the car? I never, I never said Cody was driving the car. Cody <laughs> thought I was being a rat. Dude, I'll never tell on you. <laughs> I, I, that ain't in my DNA. I, I don't get down like that, okay? <laughs> so I'm a real one. So, yeah. Uh, that was my, <laughs> those were my three episodes of jail. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> And hate these last two because I was grown, but it was trying yeah. to get a couple of dollars. I was making money in Ohio, but that shit. Was so, so China, if you could, um, if you could give some your younger self, right, young China, some advice, what would that advice be? It wouldn't be doing all the craziness that I was doing back then. I tell you that <laughs> it wouldn't be none of that. I I would be. It, it wouldn't be none of that. I would have went to four-year college somewhere out of state. My grandparents had enough money to put me through school to be doctors, me and my brother. We yeah. we just went left. My grandmother said it wasn't because of what, what I taught you or whatever. Y'all just went wild and did whatever y'all want. It wasn't because of us, because they gave us a good life. Like, like I said, I would have my probably a four-car garage sitting fat yeah. somewhere with degrees, okay, and a husband with degrees, okay, living good, <laughs> good, work for it, earn, go to college, go to school, do something. I would have right. did that at, at, at a young age if I could do it all over again. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So I see you uh, you involved in doing a little intervention work 
Is that why yeah. you got involved in it? Well, well, that's part of it. They was telling me about it, so I, uh, I know all about it. So yeah, why not give back uh, today? You know, give yeah. back. Try to school them. Try to tell them to go to school and do the right thing. So yeah, yeah, I like that work. That that was cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, that's that's like the hope of uh, you know Michael and I. You know, when we started Gangster Gangster. Our, our, our objective is to 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 be some be to, to be a resource to people to say hey look there's, there's a better way you can do this and not simply say it but to offer the resources and say hey you know this there's something you can do with your life you do not want to do mike did he did 33 years i did 27 and we okay. we, we did we, we both did more than that that, that yeah. was just the, the last bit we did yes you know and yeah. and we don't want that for no young homies. We don't want to see no young homie walking out the penitentiary after after three decades. Nobody. We don't want to see that. You know. So we when we, we, when you when we're there, you know, um, you know, you know that you you see me in the park. You know, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I'm not. I, yeah. That's not my thing. So, mm -hmm. but um, I, I you know I I want to represent to to the, to the young homies that that look. There's a way. You know, I know that it don't feel like there's a way out. And I, I I get it. You know, we were there. And, yeah. And, and when we in it, it don't feel like there's a way out. Mm -hmm. But that's because we didn't have anybody there to show us. And yes. what we're trying to do with, with this media company that Mike and I start, we're trying to, to put something together to, to put us on a map in a way other than what you like talking about earlier, giving funerals, other than that, right? Other yeah. than, than, than being known for, you know, cats that's just out there doing all the crazy stuff and, and got the crazy people, and all, you know. And you know, I was looking at the one of the things the FBI was like, H Ray Gangs is the, the, the most dangerous street gang in Los Angeles. Like, mm -hmm. like that's not a uh that's not something you aspire to. Yeah. Right. And any young 15, 14 year old who's aspiring to be the best H Ray gangster he can be, all he need to do is look at all the old H Ray gangsters. He don't know it, but they were better than they could ever be. Those right. guys were, they were that's way more than you will ever we, be. We had we had expired to be the best a trade we could be uh, right right and look, yeah. right, like look at the look results result of that yeah. like the result is not a good got to, not it's not a good look yeah so you, you want to look at it you look in your future what you're going to see is, is your, yourself getting out of the penny penitentiary after three decades yes. you know struggling trying to figure old out man. how you want to get, get your Don't thing get old man Past exactly. 50, told my brother and ronnie was 17 when that happened 16. they said yeah. we ain't let none of them out till you get after 50. You know, you can't think that far. They'd have told me that I dropped dead. 50 <laughs> back then, right. you're a teenager. That yeah. was devastating to me. Yeah, you that's know, like you heard me. Like you never getting out. Really yeah. in your head, it's like you never yeah. get out. That's right. exactly right. what it's like. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad my son at least never he he escaped that part so far. He's 33, yeah. but he didn't do the jail thing. He went right. one time to camp and nothing but tickets thank god this god somebody up there looking out for him but right. he he didn't do all that yts and he went to the pen and all that better knock on some wood but you know i'm glad yeah. he didn't go through that it's, it's, our time is still ticking i hope not because he's older now but right. yeah. he seems to do silly shit sometimes but not the gang banging shit i don't know but yeah, yeah. I, that would hurt me for if my son would have repeated that like my like his uncle, my brother. But he didn't uh, repeat that because he could have long time ago. So uh, be before we go, I want you to get some advice. You you like I said, you are the most famous cripplet in 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 all the world. Now give some <laughs> oh, advice. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, he really put me out there. Um, <laughs> give okay. some advice to 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 young ladies who who might be you know. Um, on the road to this the lifestyle that you you ultimately live what would you say to them they 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 need to they need to stay in school if they're underage or whatever still school the school girls they need to go to school go to school is it you 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 can still you can still kind of hang a little bit because that was like joyce joyce hung but joyce went to college joyce did everything but she went to college she worked there for irs years now she's at the gas company on the 20 some floor on Wilshire. She turned out well with it. But right. the schooling, just, just stay positive. Go right. to school. You don't have to be on the streets just right. drinking and, and putting a tray before everything. A tray right. is not everything. 
So yeah. someone put yeah. a trade, you know, that game banging, maybe China did. Like the world, think the world of it. No, yeah. no, no. Go, go, go to school, do something positive. Don't, don't just think the world of this game banging stuff out here. Yeah. And if I can tell them, don't even game bang at all today, yeah. you know, because yeah. it's, it's, it's nothing today. I right. said too much it's then, then I thought it was, but no, no, go go the other way. If you can, just go the other way. Not knocking it or whatever. It's not the same as back then at all. It's right. just ridiculous now to me. It's just really crazy. So right. just, just go to school. Be positive. Respect. Have respect for people. Yes. You know, uh, I, I don't know. Just, you know, do go to school. Be somebody. Be somebody. Before. More importantly, have respect for yourself. Huh? Yes, yes, and definitely have respect for yourself. That's how people always have respect for me because I have respect. I can still walk through the set with my head up because I always have respect for myself. Exactly. My grandmother taught me well. And then what you do is how you do it, China. But she was a respectful lady. She taught me the right things. She did. I might didn't listen, but I heard every word she said. You know, uh-huh. I hope that little something, something. <laughs> yeah, and all that. And you know what I would say is this: if you choose this lifestyle, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna promise you what you're gonna choose is struggle, right? You will, choose, yes. you will choose the struggle, yes. and sometimes you'll be struggling for the rest of your life. Yes. So if you choose this lifestyle, you, um, you better recognize that that there are things that's gonna happen in your life that you're yes. never gonna get over. There's exactly. things that's gonna happen to you that you're never gonna get over. Um. So, I, I, I my, my advice. Is, is like trying to say is it's run stay, go the other run, way run the other way as quickly <laughs> as you can yes and, and, and like you said you go might not school. be able to handle it yeah. you know yeah. with right. the run, killing to, like, run to the schoolhouse <laughs> yeah. your arms and all like, you might not be able to handle that crack right. you up you be crazy forever <laughs> shit yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's shit behind this game banging stuff. Yeah yeah because <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the older generation know? they're they're either drug addicted um alcohol addicted just dying from the lifestyle that they live they like yes. die we, we we actually don't live very very long because they die young yeah like in their 60s like when they, they're dying dropping like flies in their 60s because the, all the stuff they've done to their body in their youth oh, so yeah. I, this, oh, yeah. this is not a lifestyle for anybody to choose it's not, it's uh, not. Uh, you know take it from people you know the three people here who are telling you right now that they lived it and they're telling you that this is not the, the choice not. you want to make it's not. It's really not. Because I'd have did it different. I, yeah, it, you know, I had a good time, but no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it was fun while it was lasting. Like, yeah. You know, the, yeah. The, the intro, the intro, the killing part the, of the, it. The, the intro, the intro, the intro to the song. You say that uh, it was it was heaven. It was heaven while it lasted. Uh huh. You know, that's how it was. It's heaven okay. while it lasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It was, it was heaven till it crashed or something like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. That's right. All right, so this has been Gangster Gangster. We have been here with Miss China Doll from HR Gangster. Um, this has been a, a, a wonderful interview. We're going to uh, cut it off now and um, and say our goodbyes. So on behalf of Deacon Michael Hall, I'm Ascari abdul Montakum, and this has been Gangster Gangster. Yeah. I was in the heart of it, man. I was in the heart of it, where it all happened, in the dark of it, I'm talking all the graphics, do I ever miss a block, man, they all ass, I think it's heaven at the top, till it all crashes, I was functioning with the rest, cause I was one of them, look, every soldier around kept a gun on them, everything looking for them, running up on them, I got some pictures in my mind, I could never post them, it was explosive every day, we made a show of it, tried to get rich and die, try, had to go for it, the generation of the killer made you know of it, but it's hard to be proud when you're grown from it, the clear wrong of it, it seemed right then, a fraternity of brothers stay fighting, for respect and a disrespectful environment, damn the danger in the trenches, what's exciting, life is the kill, at least that's how we move, and your word went nil, had to show and prove, and the strikes we approved was a stepping stool, the network grew, so did the investment grew, I was in the heart of it, where it all happened, in the dark of it, I'm talking all the graphics, do I ever miss a block, man, they all answer, I think it's heaven at the top, till it all crashes.